What you've just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Usual with the globe, it's all corrupt, and the knobs that are running it are purely that. Total knobs, weak little gimps. This morning I noticed on a Free Market Justice Warriors YouTube channel a video wherein he wanted people to believe warming caused by increased atmospheric carbon dioxide is still being, um, sought. Heh. <laughs> Gosh, that's funny. Now, because the real field of climate change is... That's right, the real field of climate change, as compared to all of the other fields of climate change. ...has been virtually abandoned by scientists in the UK and the US. Anyhow, um, the scientists don't know it's been abandoned. Huh, how odd. So we've got a couple of Danish guys here stepping in, Frank Lancer and Jens uh, Pedersen. Paper just released. It's called Temperature Trends with Reduced Impact of, of, of Ocean Temperature. Now, I'll just read the abstract so you get some idea what it's about. That just cracks me up. This clown read one abstract and then concluded the entire field of geophysics is wrong. The paper in question, in summary, the statisticians took about 2% of the world's weather station data, selected four stations located on ocean coastlines. They then looked at the topography data, and then looked at the prevailing winds data. They then demarcated within those 2% of data which stations were sheltered from ocean winds and which were not, and then estimated the temperature trend differences. They found a slight warming effect with unsheltered stations with wide error bars. However, they also used the raw data and not the corrected data. Geophysicists have known since the early 1980s that weather stations greatly varied regarding such criteria as if in the shade or if in sunshine, if the station had a roof over it or a box around it, and if the station was located in urban or rural areas. Stations started to be standardized regarding placement and other factors starting in the 1950s, and therefore the data shows this fact. It's pretty smart to think of this, to think of separating land areas from each other as far as whether they're ocean-affected areas or non-ocean air-affected areas. Yeah, uh, even though Dr. Kevin Trenbreth actually got an award for doing that, and he's been doing that for over 30 years, but gosh, it really was clever for two more scientists to do it also. So what he's saying, basically, this is his graph that he produces from the two separate data sets in separate areas. So the ocean is not going to warm up with the warming earth as fast as you might think it should, as fast as the land does. Uh, no, the paper does not say that. The paper does not even imply that. And so, this is why the ocean temperatures do not reflect the heat balance over the earth, so... No, the paper made no such claim, no such assertion, did not even imply it, certainly did not conclude any such thing. Ocean surface temperature is vastly different than land surface temperature because Earth's ocean is a massive, massive heat sink. At least 92% of human-caused warming of the planet has gone and is going into the Earth's ocean. The heat balance over the Earth from 1920 to 1950 reflected that, you know, on land that the Earth heated up quite a bit. And water is wet. But still, it's not as warm in the non-ocean affected areas of the land as it was in the 1930s. Good bloody grief. The graph shows temperature differences, not overall temperature. R E R G. I'm sorry, I feel better now. The two lines are temperature differences, not absolute temperatures. If we wanted to see human-caused warming of these stations, you use the absolute temperatures, not the differences between temperatures of those stations. And this is what we care about, because this is land temperatures. No, the graph does not show land surface temperature. 
The graph shows the differences between two subsets of the weather station data based upon the wind footprint of coastal weather stations. This graph is not showing land nor sea surface temperatures. We don't live in the oceans, we live in the land. And the land temperatures now are roughly similar to what, uh, what the land temperatures were in the 1930s. No, the temperature differences are not land temperatures. Non-ocean affected land areas. So the underlying rise in temperature that is supposedly in the global data set has disappeared. No, the chart does not show global surface temperature. The chart shows differences between sheltered stations did not deviate significantly over the past 110 years or so. This is what uh, the alarmists have been you know, tying up with this rising CO2, saying, well, CO2 has caused it all. Well, in fact, you can see from these uh, non-ocean affected areas of land, that there is no warming trend whatever. No, the chart shows there is no significant trend in the differences among sheltered weather stations. This was necessary as a baseline to show any trend among the unsheltered weather station, which is the whole fucking point of the fucking paper. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it.